はい、はい、ブズブズブズブズブズブズブズブズブズブズブズブズブズブズ I'm sorry. Hi everyone, it's me. And today, let's survive this death game together. Let's go. Did you know that at least one saw appears in each and every one of the Saw movies? It's true. Sometimes they're used for autopsies, sometimes they're used for severing body parts, sometimes they're just used for good old killing, but the namesake of the franchise has, in every installment, at least appeared once. And sure, you can find any number of listicles online looking and ranking the best Saw films, but have you ever seen someone talk about the best saws in Saw? No, you have not. So we ran the numbers and get this. The average Rotten Tomatoes score for films where the Saw doesn't kill someone is high. Higher than the movies where the saws do kill someone. 34.6% versus 24.3%. But appearances of hacksaws ultimately win the day. Movies with a hacksaw average out to 33.75%. Movies with an electric saw, like a buzz saw or circular saw, are much lower at 23.5%. Looks like all the lists are right, friends. Not all saws are created equal. <laughs> Film Theory! Hello, Hello Internet! Welcome to Film Theory! Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory! Hello? A show that wants to play a game. The rules of the game, you have 60 seconds to hit the subscribe button, or else, uh, uh, I can't really make you wear a reverse bear trap or anything, and, uh, totally out of acid. If you don't subscribe, you will have to dress like Cool Kid Jigsaw from the final chapter. The only thing worse than death by saw, death by cringe. In 2004, millions of people went to the theaters and saw the psychological thriller Saw. And everyone who saw Saw knew it was something special, because it featured brutal violence, interesting themes, and a villain named John Jigsaw Kramer who not only could engineer brilliant traps but could lay face first on a gross bathroom floor for hours on end. Oh. To me, the best thing about these movies are the elaborate and creative traps they present. A pit of needles, a laser collar, a machine that slowly pulls your hair out. I mean, they are brutal contraptions. After you hear those iconic words, I want to play a game. You know that things are about to get serious. While the character on screen is forced to think about survival on the fly, the audience is forced to ask itself largely the same things, like whether you actually be able to use a hacksaw to take off your foot. You learn the rules of the game with the characters, and when one of them miraculously survives, it's thrilling because you're in the situation with them, and you don't have to hear that final tagline of GAME OVER! Here's the thing, though. What if you weren't safely in the audience? As I've talked about in a previous film theory, Jigsaw's ideology is wildly flawed. Thanks, Billy, <laughs> but I had to hack off my arm with a butcher's knife because you didn't think I was appreciating life enough. But man, now I'm sure glad to be alive. Can't wait for all those years of counseling I'll be getting to deal with my survivor's remorse. As such, Jigsaw's <sighs> contestant selection is a bit hard to predict. In other words, you could very well be living a perfectly upstanding life, but potentially wind up in the next reverse bear trap without even knowing what you did wrong. And when that happens, you can't go in ill-prepared. So that is our question for today. How do you survive Saw? Based on everything that we see in the series' nine movies, what can you do to maximize your odds of survival? Alright, case and points, let's just point out uh, one just very important fact. Alright, Saw is wrong. The psychological aspect of it is just wrong. What he thinks is correct is is proper is the right thing to do might be incorrect might be the wrong thing to do for some other individuals we are all different and it's wrong to instill such extreme extreme principles into other people it's just wrong so yeah how do you not just play the game, but hack the game in advance to give yourself the best chance of living possible? Live or die. Make your choice. Live, choice. live, yep, definitely choose to live there. <laughs> Overall, across the whole series, there's only 19 examples of when games are won, and 68 examples of when people died. Alright, so may the odds be ever in our favor, that's... That is a 21.8% success rate, which, uh, let's just say is not a grade that's gonna get you onto any honor rolls. In other words, the best first step to surviving John Kramer's game is not getting selected in the first place. Yeah. So, who does he pick and why? Well, we took John's own advice. If you're good at anticipating the human mind, it leaves nothing to chance. 
and analyzed every character, game, timeline, flashback, motive, and death to help us avoid getting strapped into our next shotgun carousel. Jigsaw and his acolytes believe that the death traps help people. They attempt to transform lazy or corrupt human beings who devalue and squander their lives into people with a refreshed appreciation for their existence. And so, yeah, some of his victims make sense. In the first movie alone, you have people who've tried to take their own lives, people who commit fraud, drug addicts, and adulterers. But then there are others, like Detective Singh, who's a good cop and was just killed by a shotgun trap in Jigsaw's lair. Or Zep, a hospital orderly who's generally very nice. Or Allison and Diana Gordon, two family members that were kidnapped in order to ensure that someone else who is corrupt would play the game. For a guy that says, Killing is distasteful. To me. He casts a wide net. One film in <laughs> and his choices are already pretty questionable. So Yeah, so he's contradicting himself. He's just a... A fool, a really foolish individual. He should have done more research. After analyzing all of the game contestants, I came up with a short list that tells you exactly how to not be selected. One, don't be corrupt or work for corrupt people. It's a pretty obvious one. Less obvious, don't be related or married to anyone corrupt. Doesn't ma Quite hot. matter if you appreciate life, as long as your relative or spouse doesn't, you're likely gonna be put into the game. Doesn't even matter if you know about the corruption, you're in danger by association. For instance, in Saw 2, Eric Matthews' son is put in the game. Those who don't appreciate life do not deserve life my son appreciates his life but do you appreciate yours yes do you appreciate your sons yes unexpected corollary to all of this don't be the spouse or child of someone who's died because of a corrupt person next up don't be a jerk no racists no snitches no adulterers and don't you dare laugh at the sicker elderly because jigsaw is an aging sick man and he does not take kindly to that getting back into self-explanatory territory don't do stop just stop for a moment first case and points it is inevitable that there might be some sort of distasteful impressions that person one person two person three groups of people have among each other it's just inevitable but having said that it's also important to recognize that we are welcoming we are understanding we learn we grow we develop and we overcome our mistakes the mistakes that we made in the past we learn from our mistakes so that in the future, we try to avoid it. Even though we know that it's, it's inevitable that in the future we will still make it, but we will try to avoid it. And even when we do make this, we recognize that, yes, we are at fault. And we can improve on, onto it. We can educate people so that the mistake, the fault, the bad things will inevitably reduce itself to the point of obsolete. Gosh, learn criminal activities like drugs or murder, and don't flee the scene of your crime. Next one's a hard one. Try not to be depressed. I get it, that might not be in your control, but if you are depressed, hide it. Don't post publicly about it. Seriously, if you don't want to be locked in a death furnace, just keep your melancholic tweets to yourself. Don't... Ooh, here's a good catch-all. Jobs. Avoid being a doctor or a cop. Doesn't matter if you're good at your job or bad, Jigsaw has taken people for being both too good and too bad. Pretty much all the major law enforcement characters in this franchise die. Also, you can be a janitor, but only at upstanding legal businesses. If you're a janitor at a corrupt business, you are fruit of the poisonous tree and will likely be plucked. And working for big pharma or big insurance is just right out. Big no-go there. Lastly and most importantly, do not pretend that you are a survivor of Jigsaw. If you do, you, your team, everyone you love and care about will die horribly. It is not pretty, friends. So, that's the list. Honestly, I'd say you should just live in a bubble and do nothing, but then you might be picked for a game because you're hiding from the world and not appreciating your life appropriately. Good news, though, if you follow this list- Stop for one moment first. What is your understanding, your definition of appropriate in comparison to my understanding of appropriate and other of appropriate difference? Don't- instill such harsh <sighs> Please, please understand me. You've severely lessened your chances of being picked. Bad news is you're still at risk. <laughs> these guys are kind of fickle and inconsistent. Let's say that one day you're looking at your phone and you bump into one of Jigsaw's apprentices spilling super hot coffee all over their face. This apprentice Accidents. is now super- Coincidence, accidents, incident, you apologize. It's, it will happen. 
super annoyed because the pig mask they wear is gonna be super uncomfortable. So you're nabbed and put into a trap under the excuse that you were absorbed in your phone rather than looking up appreciating the world around you. So congratulations, you are now in a jigsaw trap despite your best efforts. What do you do? Well, when you break it down statistically, there are seven different types of traps in Jigsaw's games. Standard traps, competitions, tests, trials, security traps, execution traps, and inescapable traps. Standard traps are devices or scenarios applied to a victim that'll kill the test subject if the task isn't completed within a certain amount of time. The iconic reverse bear trap is a classic example, as is Saw 2's death mask and Saw 4's knife chair. Competition traps involve two or more victims that can pass their tests individually, but only at the expense of the other victim. Saw 3D's love triangle, where two boyfriends and the cheating girlfriend between them have to decide who gets sawed to death is pretty iconic for this. What Tests are games that involve a victim being given instructions to a specific task, like Zep having to kidnap an innocent family in the first movie in order to live. Trials are a series of tests that the victim has to face in order to show psychological progress. This is basically every puzzle seen throughout Saw 5. A security trap is just a glorified security device, like the quadruple shotgun hallway trap, which is literally just a bunch of guns on a tripwire. Execution traps are just there to finish off people in creative ways, like Saw 5's water cube, where there's no game, there's just death. And lastly, there are the inescapable traps, which, as the name implies, are just used to kill people like the rigged pendulum trap. Sure, there's a game that you can play to quote-unquote win, but the game is rigged against you regardless of what you actually do. So, so kiss and points, I'm gonna stop this video for a while first because I think it's just disgusting. It's just purely disgusting. Please remember that we are all humans. You, me, we are all humans. We are imperfect. We make mistakes. And it's always remember to forgive. Apologize. Be grateful, be appreciative. And be respectful towards one another. Thank you so much for politeness. Thank you. Make the world a more better place. Positive. Equipped with all that information, what do you do? Well, the number one rule in all of the Saw franchise is that the rules of our game have been made very clear. You need to abide by those rules. I understand that it's easier said than done when it comes to listening to a tricycle riding puppet giving you instructions, and you have like 60 seconds on the clock, but Jigsaw is pretty upfront about how to play and win each game. Research shows that fear can actually cause your brain's executive network, which is responsible for problem solving, to constrict and work less effectively, which means that you're gonna have to be prepared to listen intently when each game begins. Saw 2 is full of people screwing this fundamental lesson up. In Saw 2, a note explicitly says, do not attempt to use this key on the door to the room, the key is used to open the door, and boom, it kills someone. Later, all Detective Eric Matthews had to do was sit around in order to win. I want to play a game. The rules are simple. What you have to do is sit here and talk to me. Listen to me. If you do that long enough, then you will find your son in a safe and secure state. Instead, he falls victim to Jigsaw's tricks and winds up in multiple movies and a long series of traps trying to escape until eventually dying in Saw 4. It also doesn't help that only 31.25% of entrants in the standard traps actually pass. What's even worse than that is that three of the games were rigged, two of the five people who passed their tests were killed immediately afterward, and all five of them ended up dead later on in the series. Surviving a game doesn't always mean that you're going to be alive later, which means that we need to go on to lesson number two, just go ham on it. If you have a chance of winning, you need to go hard and you need to go fast. We see this with Amanda in Saw 2's Pit of Needles, and more so with Charles in Saw 5's Necktie Trap. By acting fast and first in his group, he's able to ensure his survival while everyone else is still left in danger. And with that, good news! You've passed the isolated test and your hands are probably crushed, if not entirely sawed off. As you walk away, you hear Jigsaw saying, Congratulations. You are still alive. Most people are so ungrateful to be alive, but not you. Not anymore. You respond with a hearty thumbs up, if your bleeding hands can still manage to move, and you pretend to walk away with a swagger that indicates that you are very grateful to be alive. The bad news is that as you approach the exit, a man in a pig mask drugs you, heals your hands, and then locks you up in yet another room, this time with total strangers. Billy pops back up again and tells you that everyone needs to work together to pass a series of competition traps and trials, and you have three hours to do so because you have poison flowing through your veins that'll melt you from the inside out. Hate to tell you this, but only 13 
of the 41 games, or 25.4% of Jigsaw's tests that involve two or more people, are passed. In games that have four or more people working together, the odds are definitely stacked against you. Only four of the 17 people in the four plus group games walked out alive. And even those numbers lie considering two of those are coming from Saw 2, with one being a Jigsaw apprentice placed in the game to keep the other survivor safe. TLDR here, the odds are stacked against you, but you can increase your odds by killing and sacrificing all your teammates. Now, that might sound like I'm a horrible person, but don't blame me. Blame the game maker and also the numbers. Statistically, the group will turn on you eventually, considering that we see it happen in Saw 2, Saw 5, and Jigsaw. Psychologically speaking, everyone deals with trauma differently. Now add in a ticking clock and the threat of poison killing you, and you have a recipe for disaster. The people in your group will develop tunnel vision. They'll become hysterical. They'll develop a fight or flight reaction which hinders your chances at survival. And these challenges are already hard enough. The last thing you need is other people weighing you down in a crisis moment. So just deal with them early before you're forced to deal with them. As an added bonus, make sure you bring a dead body or two with you to the next room. Their flesh, blood, insert vital organ here is probably going to be helpful in the upcoming trial. And speaking of bringing stuff with you, remember what tools you really have available and bring as much with you between chambers as you can. In most of Jigsaw's challenges, especially the trials, you are the one progressing things forward, shutting doors behind you, etc. to start timers. So before you lock yourself into the next game, make sure that you're going in prepared. Assess the scene, take your time, go back to the room that you just left and pick up things that might be helpful. Any tools, broken pipes, long sticks, your fellow deceased contestants. Remember that in pretty much all circumstances, Jigsaw is letting you keep your clothes on. And things like jackets, belts, shoes can do a lot in these sorts of situations. Between your tools and clothes and the tools and clothes that might be coming from your deceased contestants, you can actually do a lot here. Most of these traps work remotely and use fairly rudimentary tools to operate. Pressure plates, simple chains and hydraulics. So having a bit more reach and the ability to shove something hard and solid into contraptions can actually help a lot. Lastly, urine can act as a substitute for blood, assuming it didn't all leak out due to fear in the first chamber. And with that, you walk out of your final test. Congratulations, you've survived. Now relax in the knowledge that you'll be surveilled by Jigsaw and his crew for the rest of your life, because that's exactly what happens to most of the survivors in these movies. So keep your head low, research any companies that you plan on working for, listen, follow the rules, sacrifice anyone and everyone around you, and then pretend to be happy that you went through the single most frightening experience in your life. Seize the day, Jeff. For real. Go running naked in a hailstorm, kiss a girl in the middle of the day, fly a kite, but do it for yourself. Well, yourself. And the pig masked army watching your every move, waiting for any excuse to throw you back into another game. But hey, that's just a theory. This, however, could be the beginning of a long summer of the best horror movie franchises out there. I love horror movies all year round. I actually just finished re-watching all the Conjuring movies in honor of the new one releasing. And if you're looking to beat the heat this summer, consider getting your chills from today's sponsor, Shudder. I use Shudder to help with horror movie research for this channel, and statistically, horror is a genre that you, the audience of this channel, love. It's why we do horror movie episodes like this one, because you guys watch the heck out of them. Which means that you are gonna watch the heck out of Shudder. Shudder is the place to go to to brush up on everything from your horror movie classics, like Bram Stoker's Dracula and Halloween, or dive deeper into the genres that really get to you. They currently have streaming the scariest movie I've ever seen in my life, Audition. They also have Heathers, which is like 90% comedy and like 10% horror, and made an amazing musical years later. The long and short of it is that no matter what you're looking for in the category of scares, it is there, including exclusives like The Reckoning and their original Creep Show, which is a horror anthology a la American Horror Story, another one of my favorites. To try Shudder for free for 30 days, go to Shudder.com and use the promo code FILMFURY. That's S-H-U-D-D-E-R.com, not Shudders like the things on the outside of your house. With that 30 days free, you can watch horror movies every night of the week, at your barbecue, at your pool party, in the showers, at the beach, the possibilities are endless, as are the jump scares. Check it out in the description below, and as always, thank you for supporting the sponsors who support us, because it means that they will continue to support us in the future, which is great. You get cool content, we get funding to do more episodes like this. It's a win-win-win for everyone involved. So in the meantime, remember, it is just a theory. A film theory. And cut. Well, thank you, thank you so much for watching this video together with me. I find this... Thank you. This is dark. This episode was really dark. I I I, I don't think if I I, I, I uh.
thank you so much for watching this video together with me. I hope you find this video very interesting. Gosh. Please, gosh. Like, share, subscribe, comment, follow. Thank you. Oh my gosh. My goodness, man. I. I. I uh, but hey, that is just a theory. A film theory. Thanks for watching. And cut. My gosh. We are all human beings. Please treat with one another with decency, respect, understanding. Gosh, my goodness. It's dark. It's just way too dark. Where's the love? Where's the understanding? Where's the appreciation? Where's the gratitude? I 